This is the Utah film as it was originally photographed. The image structure and maneuvers definitely eliminate any kind of known aircraft. This is where Chief Photographer Newhouse, in his excitement, changed exposure. He believed that by changing density and giving the film more contrast, he could clarify the objects. The single object that reversed its course. The bounce is due to handheld camera. Now we study the action of one section of the film. We stop the action. We move in. Within a five mile range, aircraft could be determined. In excess of five miles, the speeds are greater than aircraft can achieve, except in straight line speed runs. The movement here follows an elliptical or circular pattern. Microscopic examination reveals that the objects are well focused. Their size varies from one-sixth to one-tenth the size of the moon as it appears to the naked eye. Their form is circular and sometimes elliptical. This fits the commonly used flying saucer description. Observe the object in the upper left corner. We move in to study the action. The object upper left will go out of frame on widescreen projection. Observe the motion of the two objects upper right as we rock them back and forth. Now we move over and up on the frame to make a closer study of the object in the upper left corner. Examine this object closely. Compare it with those objects you saw in the Montana film. These films were taken approximately two years apart, hundreds of miles apart. We drop back to the original perspective and resume. Now the section of the film where photographer Newhouse changed exposure. Weather conditions together with the persistence and motion of the formations eliminate the possibility of atmospheric mirages. Photogrammetric experiments have shown that the images cannot be associated with any kind of birds at any distance. Stop. Now forward again. Stop. We drop back to original perspective. Now once again, and for the last time, the Utah film. The objects cannot be associated with any known balloon observations. 